Hi guys, welcome to Kingdom Dialogues, Word of the Lord for 2024. This is our last session for this year, uh, but we are so grateful that you have been with us and you've journeyed with us. Please like and subscribe. Uh, to me, today with me is a man called Martin Kabiru. Martin Kabiru, Ponga. Um, is it Kabiru? Kabiru. Kabiru. Well, how, how do you pronounce that Kabiru? Well, in Western, they... The other H. The other H. Between the K and the A. Yeah. So my brother Oscar will conquer and say in Western is Habiru. Habiru. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. In Nyanza we remove the K uh -huh. and A. Uh -huh. We put an O. We uh -huh. say it's called Obiru. Obiru. Yeah. In, in Western, in, 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 in Central, they, yeah. they say Kafiro. Ah, Kafiro. Kafiro. Uh, in okay. Nairobi, yeah. and the group of schools, they say Kabiru. Kabiru. All right. Yes, all right. And, all right. Um, yeah. But in our family, yeah. it's, it's, it's Kabiru. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know there's a lot about that name, which we will not get into today, but maybe at a certain date we'll get into. But tell us a bit about yourself. Um, so thank you, first of all, Reverend Oreno, for an opportunity to share. Yeah. And, um, and thank you for the altar that you've created at Ekima Center. Uh, so yes, it's, it's very hard to speak about a man without speaking about the name. So yeah. yes, we'll just touch on it a bit. Okay. Uh, so Kabiru is a name that um, um, means a seer. Mm. It means uh, an advisor to kings. So in olden days in our tribe, what I've learned is that these are people who hung around kings yeah. and they were, they saw what the Lord, or what the direction of the people needed to be and they advised kings. So in the olden, in the olden, in the Old Testament, this would be a nothing. Mm. Advising David. Yeah. yeah. So, so yes. So Kabiru is a seer, um, um, uh, and Kabiru is, uh, I believe, is a man who submitted to God, would walk in a lot of wisdom, mm. and not really for him, but for others. So I find myself in that space quite a bit. I am a solution-oriented person. Yeah. I'm trained as an architect. Yeah. So we have one of those rare gifts of seeing the end from, from the, the beginning. beginning. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, so God is referred to as a, 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 a mighty physician. Mm. You know, the great healer and also yeah. is referred to as the architect. Yes, the master architect. The master architect. Yeah. So, and I think it's just that ability to see. So naturally, again, submitted to the Lordship of Christ, we are disposed to be men of faith. Mm. Yeah, I... So that's what I see myself okay. as, and I see the anointing of discernment, mm -hmm. the anointing of wisdom, the anointing of the Lord. When submitted to Him, I see these things coming In out. Okay. Yeah. So I am a family man, yeah. and it's very important to say, I'm married to one wife, and I have two kids and one on the way. And, and I, I have a passion for seeing transformation in the built environment, but also in the lives of people. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I love campus. Excellent. Yes. Yes, I know you have a special part of your heart that is to the youth, to the campusarians, that, yes. that, that age set. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Specific. So tell us, what, what do you feel in your heart about 2024? So I feel many things, and uh, uh, with your permission, I'd like to yes, grab right. some, yeah. some, just my notebook to, mm. to aid in flowing the thoughts. But towards the end of last year, and I think in the last year, God had begun to theme a lot of the things he spoke to me about the word light. Okay. Okay. So I remember we were going through Genesis with my kids and my wife got into a, a bit of a study to help my, my children begin to understand. It was funny. She studied the, mm. the word Kabiru and what it means. So what people know is the plumb bulb. Yeah. You know, so but the deeper meanings are... are people with, who bring light into matters. Mm. So we began to search the scriptures about light. And remember the first scripture we landed upon uh, was in Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, there was light. And how light came. was God, yeah. The beginning was God. Yeah. Isn't it? Mm. No, in the beginning, the God earth, created the heavens and the earth. And the earth yes, yes, God created the heavens and the earth. Yes. And the earth was formless. Yes. And void. Yeah. And darkness filled the face of the deep. Yeah. 
but the spirit of the Lord was still moving over the surface, over of, the the waters. surface of the waters. Then God said, let, let there, there be, be light. light. Yeah. So the first thing created out of the creative word of God, which we learn in scripture, mm. is Christ, mm. is light. Mm. And of course, we have the sequence of creation. And there was evening and morning. And morning. The so he created place. the first season. Yeah. And the separator of the season was light. Yes. Light. Mm. So we began to ask. So mm. after that, we moved into the first book of the New yeah. Testament, yeah. which is the book of John. Yeah. No, Matthew, Ma well, this, one of the, the actually yes. the last. Yeah. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, so yeah. the last one. And John is a very accurate depiction of Christ. John 1 1. In the beginning was, was the, the word. word, and the word was, was with God. God, and the word was, was God. God. He was mm. there mm. in the beginning. Everything that was created, Genesis 1, yes. was created but by him. through him, mm. and through him. And there was nothing that was created other than that which was created through him. In him was life, life yes. and this life was the light. Was the light. Of men. men. Yes. And this light shines in darkness. Mm. And darkness cannot comprehend it. Mm. So you begin to connect. So Christ in him was the light that we are talking about. Mm. He was in creation. Mm. So we would literally say that you know, and I think it's 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 it must be it must be Psalm one nineteen. Mm. I believe 130 says yeah. the breaking of the word yeah. bringeth forth light. light. And, you, you, and you, gives you, understanding to and the simple gives thing. understanding mm. to the simple mm. thing. Thank you for finishing mm. it. So what do you see a connection here? Mm. You know, Christ came and his body was broken. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Are, you, are you seeing the correlation? Yeah. yeah. Um, and maybe just to wrap it up, in that sense, of course, you know yeah. the promises of the Messiah in in Isaiah 61, mm. Mm. and in in connected also to Matthew, I think I believe it's Matthew 4:15, mm. mm. when Christ is beginning his ministry. You, you know, you know, he says in the land of Zebulun mm. and Naphtali, mm. a people who have walked in great darkness have seen a marvelous light. Yeah. I think my mind just began to, and those who walk in the shadow of death, mm. you, you get. Yeah. So, so this light is Christ. Yes. And when you look around and we see the darkness which which, which we live in, mm. and, and and we live in some dark times, mm. people. Mm. We all know we live mm. in some really dark mm. times. I think God was just trying to help me understand mm. and to help us understand mm. that He has always had mm. a plan. Yeah. And this plan is to illuminate the light of Christ mm. almost in every situation yeah. that we go into. Yeah. Uh, so, so that's what I feel in the year. It's still cooking, I yes. think you can see. And I think part <laughs> of the conversation is to really think, yeah. you know, what is what is the Lord saying? Yeah. And, and as we connect these um, dots, dots eh, yeah. you, you know, we we'll begin to look at, at, yeah. at some practical ways of mm. tapping into the light yes. because I believe that's it. Yes. You know, uh, if the light shone in darkness, mm. then darkness could not comprehend yes. it. That's true. Uh, uh, you you That's know, true. And, and this light shone in, in, with people, his own people. They didn't even understand him. They mm. rejected him. But mm. he says to them that believed mm. and them that received him, he yeah. gave them power. So what are you seeing? Mm. Light. Mm. For I have not given you the spirit of fear, mm. but the spirit of power, mm. of love, mm. and sound mind. Sound mind. Mm. Almost understanding. Mm. So you begin to see ah. Uh, a gravitation towards linking the light of God yeah. to the person of Christ yeah. through his word. So yeah. you see light, word, mm. Christ. Yes. Excellent. All in one. So that's what is in my spirit concerning <laughs> the year. I love yeah. I love that scripture you've talked about from Matthew, Matthew 4, yes. where it says the people who lived in darkness yes. have seen a great light, you know, mm -hmm. and to those who are under the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. Because I'm thinking about this post-COVID season for yes. us as a nation and even for the nations of the world. You know, those three years of COVID or two or three years of COVID were really, it was like a shadow of death was hovering over the globe. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine that's, that context of that verse speaks to us. Um, after COVID, I know nations have been in, in 
challenges, especially economically. Yes. And I just don't think it's economic. And initially, I was thinking it's economic. Then I realized, no, it's families are struggling. Uh, we, as Kenya, we're having issues with femicides, you know. Uh, the other day, a friend of mine was talking to me about suicides, especially in campus, you know. And that, that darkness seems to have come. And I think it's a, almost like a post-COVID darkness. Mm -hmm. Yet this is where light shines. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what I'm hearing you say is that God is saying that our eyes should not be on the darkness, our eyes should not be on the shadow of death, but our eyes should be on the light that is bringing to where we are. I'm not sure whether that makes sense. It does. It does. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It does. yeah. Uh, one of the things about some of these things, and I, 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 is sometimes it can be a bit abstract. So how would you drive it down, nail it down, in terms of, and I know you have a lot to say, but before we get into that, but in terms of activating this light, because I'm here, I'm, I'm in a dark situation. Uh, how do I activate this light? How does it work for me? How does it work for my business? How does it work for my family? Yeah. Um, thank you, Rev. I think, in a very practical sense, yeah. um, people know the light. The Bible tells us that those who love darkness mm. love it too much that even when the light shone, mm. they did not want it. Yeah. So people we were able to see the darkness we are in. Mm. But up until we see light, mm. that darkness, like the people in Zebulun and Naphtali, yeah. will be our norm, mm. isn't it? Mm. So first and foremost, I think, from a practical sense of it, if in Him, in Christ, was this life, yeah. and almost feels like we are hidden in Him, in Him. Yes. One of the scriptures that, and, and, and one of the thoughts that has come out strong, even from this pulpit, has always been, you know, who shall ascend unto the mount mm. of the Lord? You know, uh, the, the name of the Lord is a strong tower yeah. that the righteous would run in need. Mm. He who abides in the secret place of the Most High, mm. he who dwells in the secret of the Most, or mm. secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow, under the shadow yeah. of the Almighty. Mm. I, what are you seeing? What are you seeing? Mm. There's a return mm. to what God had in mind in Genesis one when He yes. created before the fall of man. And now we have a redemption of creation yeah. through Christ. The return for us at this point is really to go back to the light. And that is Jesus Christ. Mm. I personally have seen darkness. And by the way, for you to recognize darkness, you must have known light at one point. Mm, that's true. Isn't it? That's true. So we know that the bringing forth of light will dispel this darkness. Mm. I have made a commitment for me and for my family to walk in the light of Christ. Mm. And I think as a beginning point, the only differentiating factor in this season, are you walking in the light? Mm. Are we walking in the light of Christ? Mm. Are we hidden in God through Christ, mm. in Him? Is He truly our refuge yeah. and our hiding place? Yeah. You know, yeah. so when the scripture tells us in, in, in Psalm, I believe, uh, 24, mm. who shall ascend into the mountain of the Lord? Mm. He who has clean, clean hands, hands, pure heart, yeah. has not bowed his soul, his soul to an idol mm. of vanities, mm. and has not falsely, Accused. has not made his, made has not his false accusation, mm. and, and on falsely oath, oath, mm. yeah. oath that he does not need to keep. Mm. Then we begin to see a trend into mm. going back, mm. going back. Mm. If you see Isaiah, 61, I believe, which is one of the scriptures that actually does speak of the coming of the Messiah. What do you see? You see people who are lost. Yeah. Coming to. Yeah. Back to. Mm. He has come to restore our relationship with the Lord. Yeah. And I believe with all my heart that the first step is that we must return to the light of Christ. Mm. Not the light of religion, not the light of any person, but the light of Christ. So I feel like our first mandate is to really submit ourselves to God. Mm. That for me, nothing can beat that. Yeah. So we must preach salvation from our pulpits. We preach many good things, but yeah. we must preach salvation. Yeah. And the power of God, mm. the power of his light mm. to shine in the darkest mm. crevices of mm. our hearts mm. and our lives mm. to illuminate, mm. isn't it? Mm. Yeah. To illuminate. Uh, the thief comes to steal 
kill and destroy. destroy yes. If you know anything about how thieves operate, so wana kujanga usiku. Mm -hmm. yeah, no one comes in the light. If you knew that the thief was coming, he must be a very bold thief. <laughs> and even if he comes through the light, he must yeah. confuse you. Yeah. He must blind you. Yes, you know, yeah. he must blind you. Yeah. You know, when Paul received revelation of Christ, what happened? Scales had to fall off yes. his eyes. Yeah. Isn't it? For mm -hmm. him to begin to see. Yeah. So that revelation, that illumination mm -hmm. comes mm -hmm. with Christ. Mm -hmm. And I believe that there are people whose solutions for the times we live in, sit in, yeah. but they must be returned to the first love of yeah. Christ. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, th that's absolutely amazing because uh, maybe the language is different. The language I would use is different, but that's exactly what I've been sensing of late. That we need to go back. In fact, I think during this fasting season, we are mm -hmm. sort of going back to the days of Genesis yes. and using the pattern of Genesis or the model of Genesis uh, to lead us out in our fasting but now that you brought us here can we talk a bit about this thing of inheritance there's a fantastic story you gave me just a few a few minutes before we walked on the stage you know about somebody who ran away from his inheritance and yet to live a life sort of like the prodigal son to live a life a wasted life live a life where he was amongst pigs but yet what god had given him and what god wants to wanted to restore him back to was so much richer than mm -hmm. what he was living. And I believe that that's part of what the light comes to do, to bring yes. us back to our fast estate. Yes. Yeah. Um, the, um, when light comes, yeah. everything that is associated with darkness mm. runs away. Yes. So let's move mm. and speak of the wisdom of God. Mm. When Christ grew, the Bible tells us, in wisdom yes. and stature, yeah. gaining favor with God and man. man. Yeah. He was the, you know, the embodiment of the seven spirit of God, mm. which you know, the spirit mm. of the Lord, mm. spirit of wisdom, mm. knowledge, understanding, mm. counsel, the spirit of might, might, and, and the spirit, spirit of the, the fear of the Lord. Yeah. So when we begin to walk in there, we are going back to our inheritance yes. in Christ. Yeah. I honestly feel like the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. To steal our inheritances, to steal our identity yeah. in Christ. But he says that he has come that we may have life mm. and have it abundantly. Yeah. So if you despise your inheritance like Esau, you despise it because you do not know. Yes. You don't have revelation. Yeah. You don't have illumination. Mm. The one that we said in uh, Psalm 119, that the breaking of, of the, the word, word yeah. bringeth forth light. Yeah. The only person who can despise his inheritance, like mm. Esau did to the point where he literally mm. gave it away uh, for Kamande, yeah. is a person who has no idea yeah. what his inheritance yeah. means. You, you get yeah. what you're saying? And we see that the person who bought that inheritance knew. Mm. So ask yourself out here, the people who are looking like they are making it and they are not of the faith, mm. what is it that they know about you and your inheritance? Mm. If a thief knew there was a valuable thing in your house, she would come and steal it. Yeah. So why do you think the enemy is after your life, after the life of your family? Yeah. Why do you think the enemy is after the youth of this nation? Yeah. Because he knows. So ask yourself, what does the enemy know about me mm. that I don't know? Yeah. And seek the revelation of Christ concerning it. Yeah. So this man I met in a matatu once in Nairobi. It's nice to take a matatu once in yeah. a while. I know God has blessed us with vehicles, but mm. once in a while just wear nice jeans, <laughs> get into a matatu. Yeah. And you, you get to experience life in a different way. He was drunk. It was evening. I was coming into town to see my baba. And I got interested with him. And I asked him his story. And he told me he comes from Western. Mm. And... Uh, and he's just finished a day shift where he works as a, 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 a person who cleans utensils in a, in a, in a, in a, in a hotel. Mm. A very strategic uh, job for a lawyer, I must say. <laughs> you know? yeah. Don't worry, I make a lot of lawyer jokes because I grew up in lawyer land. Okay. Now he's going to his second job as a watchman mm. in Nairobi. Mm. He's already drunk. Yeah. I feel like he was numbing himself, preparing himself for this work. Yeah. And I get deep into conversation with him. He tells me he comes from Western. 
and he has five acres of land mm. in Western mm. that he was left for by his father. Then I asked him, what are you doing in this city? What are you doing yeah. as a watchman in this city if you have five acres of land? How many people, how many of us have five acres of land That's true. in a place that is fertile? Yeah. This is a man who despises his inheritance That's true. because of lack of knowledge. Mm. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. Yeah. A person who will know the true meaning of his inheritance mm. will not only go back to it, yeah. he will fight for it. Yeah. You will go on your knees, mm. fight for your generational inheritance yeah. and the generational blessings that God has given you. Yeah. I feel that one of the things that God is clearly speaking about this season is that he's releasing mm. us from the bondages mm. of either defunct, defaulted, or delayed inheritance, yeah. stolen inheritance. Mm. In him was life. And yeah. that life was the life Light. of men. Yeah. And everyone who accepted me, he gave them what? Power. Power to become what? Sons. Sons. Mm. Meaning that now you are linked to your inheritance as a son of God. Yeah. And when we begin to walk in this earth, the revelation is waiting yeah. for what? For the unveiling. Mm. Creation awaits the revelation of the, the sons, sons of, of God. God. Yeah. Those who know they are God mm. shall be strong and do what? Exploits. Exploits. All those are scriptures that we are very familiar mm. with. Going back to your inheritance starts by going back to sonship. Yeah. Knowing who is your father. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. And knowing the kind of inheritance that we have. And I think it's Paul who says that we may know yeah. and understand the riches of what? The glory of his inheritance. Of the glory of his inheritance. Mm. I honestly feel like God looks down from heaven and sometimes he wonders, do these guys know? <laughs> yeah. Do they know? Yeah. Do we know? Percy, do we yeah. know? Yeah. I don't even think I know. I have begun to go back and mm. scratch. Mm. Scratch. Yeah. If you knew. Mm. You know, you were a charity sweepstakes to look at scratch. Mm. I think I ever won just mm. 500, which mm. was a lot of money yeah. when I was a little kid. Yeah. But if you knew how much money was behind that kind of thing, yeah. wouldn't you scratch with a lot of joy? <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. And how do we scratch? Mm. We consecrate ourselves back to mm. the Lord. Mm. We ask Him to clean our garments. Mm. We ask Him to wash us yeah. with His blood. Yeah. We begin to worship Him. Mm. A man worships that which he sees and reveres. Yeah. This is my father in heaven. Mm. I am his son. We have a relationship. Christ says in the word that everything he did, he did only that which he saw his father. Yeah. Isn't it? Mm. So our inheritance in Christ mm. is the thing that unlocks. Now, I don't know what God has called all of us in. Yeah. We all have different inheritances, different spheres of influences where the Lord wants us to reign with him. That's true. For you, it could be in your ministry, for mm. someone else is in corporate marketplace, mm. for another person is in government. When you find your sonship in Christ, yeah, I believe it's First Peter mm. yeah, that says, you know, that we don't know how to pray. Mm. We don't know how to connect with mm. the things that God wants to do. Mm. By the Spirit in Him, mm. that's Romans eight. Romans eight is yeah. through. Praise no, no, no. The, one in, the, the one in Peter is, I have not given you the spirit of fear to mm. fall back mm. into slavery, mm. but I have given you the spirit of sonship that mm. when you cry, mm. Abba, Father, yeah. it is the spirit of God in you bearing mm. witness that with you the spirit are that you are truly God. what? Son of God. Son of God. Yeah. He goes and say, you guys are a royal priesthood. Yeah. Royal priesthood. Uh, uh, a good man, Maruti, spoke of kings and priests. Yeah royal priesthood, meaning mm. that you are governing both on heart yeah. and in the spirit. Yeah. I believe that we don't even know the kind of heritage that we have in Christ. Isn't it? Mm. But the spirit of God mm. in relationship with Christ and the renewal constant of our spirit yeah. begins to bring us to that place. That's true. Yeah. Excellent. I know you have a whole manual there. Maybe you can read us a few more thoughts about, uh, we are actually almost landing the plane, but just yes. a few more thoughts about 2024, and okay. then we can ask you to pray for the audience. Well, I have two thoughts. Yeah. One, I think I will speak to us, yeah. the general body of Christ. Mm. And I said practical things that uh, we can look at this year. I feel like the, God is, uh, the, the Lord is calling us to ascend again to Him. Mm. 
to really elevate the person of Christ in our lives. So God is calling us to a deeper relationship with mm. Him, mm. you know, to consecrate ourselves, to hide in Him, to be found in Him, mm. to find joy in Him, mm. to call Him into each and every place that we walk into. Yeah. So that is the first one. Mm. So then we worship the Lord, mm. okay? We begin to worship the Lord. I've been learning about prayer um, a bit and just one word about prayer that totally changed my shifting in my mind is a prayer is, is more of a governmental yeah. activity than it is a spiritual activity. Mm. Mm. That we are petitioning mm. an authority yeah. for rights given yeah. to us yeah. through the constitution which is the word of God. <laughs> okay. That sounds like Miles Monroe. Yes. <laughs> so you know him. I was yes. trying to hide him. <laughs> All right. Okay. But yes, yeah. you've, you've listened to those scriptures. Yeah. And he has such clarity. So you see, you are a citizen. Yeah. You are a son. You know your inheritance and your place. You're petitioning your father. The story of the prodigal son and the mm. firstborn son. You're petitioning your father for things that he has promised in to his give word you, yeah. to give you. It is the will of God. That's why I say, if you pray anything, According to my will, it is granted. If two of you agree on a matter here on earth, it is done. Then the word of God. I feel like we need to spend huge chunks of time mm. in the word of God in this season. Okay. And I'm doing it and I'm finding a lot of revelation. And yeah. God will speak you heavily. Yeah. So invest in the word. And for you to invest in the word, you must cut a bit of the world. Mm. Spend less and less time in binging. Spend less and less time in places. Mm and find a secret place where you can imbibe mm. continuously in the word of God. Mm. And then just the mission of Christ. Yeah. You know, uh, Matthew 28, I believe. Go into the world. We all know what he commanded us to do. Mm. But before that, there's a scripture that says, all authority in heaven and, earth. and on earth That's true. has been given to me. Mm. Therefore, go I in. command you mm. to go. Yeah. This season, is a matter of tapping into that authority, yeah. both in heaven, yeah. priesthood, and earth, mm. kingship, mm. isn't it? Then we go mm. with Christ. Mm. So that is my thought towards the, towards largely. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of thoughts around mm. the youth. Mm. Maybe this is not even the time. Yes. But what I feel in a nutshell, yeah. you know, about the importance of waiting in Him. Is, is that, you know, um, I, I think it's, it's the book of First John that really speaks to the heart of the youth, mm. isn't it? Mm. And First uh, John 2, mm. you know, John pens a couple of uh, thoughts yeah. around the youth. Yeah. Um, I think it's Jeremiah that says, chapter 1, that let not anyone despise you because, because you of are. the youth, yeah. What did he do, Percy? What did God do to Jeremiah mm. as a child? Mm. Touch this. Mm. That was Isaiah. Yes. Mm. Um, actually, even mm. the, even mm. even the prophet Jeremiah mm. at his commissioning, mm. he was very young. Mm. The Lord touched his lips. Mm. He says, uh, "I have given yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. my words." Yes, 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 yes. My words. Yeah. Again, go back to the mm. word. I think the young people of this nation need to understand, and mm. it worked for us when mm. we were young, going through mm. college. Mm. How shall a young man mm. keep his ways pure? pure. By doing what? Mm. Hiding mm. the word of the Lord yeah. in his yeah. heart yeah. that he may not sin mm. against the Lord. Mm. I honestly think that is the word for this season mm. for young people. And John goes on to say, I write to you, young men, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides richly wow. in you. Nice. And you have overcome the evil one. Evil one. Any generation, by the way, Africa has the youngest and population. growing population in the world. Yeah. That is our magic secret weapon. Yeah. We as a nation now have too much mm. human resource mm. that we're exporting it to the world. Mm. You try and imagine if every human resource being exported here, because these guys will still go. The president, in his wisdom, mm. has seen this thing mm. and is saying, go ye into the world. Yeah. Because we have skills, too yeah. much skill, yeah. isn't it? Mm. If these guys go with the word hidden in their heart, yeah. with the strength of Christ, mm. don't you think that Kenya would begin to contribute in the conquering of the That's world? True. 
Yeah. So that's I true. honestly feel that that is the word. And mm. I, that's mm. why my heart is in campus. Mm. And that's why my heart is with young people. Mm. Enabling them to know that the Lord touched their tongue, yeah. tongues and yeah. put his words yeah. on in their them, lips. Yeah. In their lips. Mm. And that they told them, don't be afraid. Mm. Go, don't be afraid. Let no one despise you because you are yeah. young. Yeah. And John tells them, I write to you young people because you are strong. The word of God richly abides in mm. you and you overcome the evil one. Try and imagine if that's the nation that we see right now. That's true. What kind of transformation would we see? That's true. So one day we will speak again yes. about just the entire depiction of how you can connect that mm. to what the Old Testament is. I know young people always feel the Old Testament belongs to Reverend <laughs> Orono and the other older guys in the room, isn't it? Uh -huh. Yeah, but that's what I see. Yeah. And I know that we've spoken about many things. Yes, yeah. But I honestly think mm. that the most critical of all the things yeah. that we can speak about mm. here is if you abide in me mm. and mm. my mm. word abides in you, yeah. you shall ask mm. for anything mm. in my name mm. and receive it. Yeah. That if you continue to abide in the tree of life. Yeah. In him was life. Yeah. We are branches in that mm. tree of life. Mm. If we abide there, mm. God is going to amaze us in our generation yeah. with what he can do Excellent. through us. And finally, again, I think uh, Miles Monroe was quoting, um, I believe he was quoting, again, I forget him. But he says, in this world, everything that happens here depends on us. It's only one time I think in scripture that God himself came down. Yeah. I think it's in Genesis. Yeah. He came down to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And see what was happening. It, and see what was happening. Yeah. Is when men had decided that mm -hmm. they are going to build a mm -hmm. tower. Mm -hmm. In Genesis, isn't it? Yeah. That's the only time recorded in scripture that God himself came down mm -hmm. in his person. Mm -hmm. And of course he used to come down and walk yeah. through his spirit. Mm -hmm. But he says in the word there that if these people agree, they can do anything. anything. So you try and imagine you partnering with heaven through living a consecrated and spirit-filled life yeah. hidden in Christ. Yeah. What can't you do? Young man, what can't you do? Mm. A leader in ministry, what can't you do? Yeah. I believe that's where the Lord is taking us. Excellent. And I am excited. You're excited. I'm excited to yeah. know what my life will become yeah. under the full, full submission yeah. to Christ. Excellent. Yes. Thank you. Bwana Kaviru, uh, please pray. Pray for the audience, pray for whoever is watching who might need light, revelation. Maybe they are stuck or they are in a dark place. Whatever the darkness may be, depression, uh, challenging economic times, even, even marital issues. Yeah. Just speak a blessing over them. Yeah. Mm. So as I, as I do that, I am reminded of a season in my own life where mm. I went through what you would call the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah. And I was depressed. And as a final year student and spirit of depression came upon me and I believe the enemy wanted to take me yeah. out. What saved me mm. was the word of God. Yeah. I remember there are nights I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. The enemy was tormenting me. That's what saved me. So anyone walking in the shadow of mm. death, mm. of the valley of the shadow of mm. death, that's like the people in Naphtali yeah. and Zebulun. I want to pray that the light of Christ mm. will illuminate in any grievance, yeah. any dark place, yeah. it is a marvelous light. Mm. It will dispel every form of darkness, yeah. every form of fear in you. If you're not born again, it will be hard for you to transact in this trading flow. Mm. I think there are some people who are watching and they know yeah. that the thing that they need to do is just to return to the first yeah. love. If yeah. you've been there and you've gone back, into the world, I had a crisis of faith at my point one time and I literally, you know, walked like someone who was not born again. Mm. But remember, nothing can separate you from the love yeah. of Christ. Yeah. No sin, because there's no sin that cannot be forgiven mm. by Christ. He's merciful, mm. Mm. isn't he? So come back, come back into sonship. So my first prayer is that people's hearts will be turned back to God. Yeah. And, that is, and, 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 and that is really the yeah. essence of what we are doing. And my second prayer is that the work of Christ would begin to permeate, illuminate, mm. bring wisdom mm. to the simple, bring understanding.
understanding yeah. bring humility mm. begin to deal with the things in your mm. life in your marriage mm. in your business there are people making money the wrong mm. way yeah. the word of god will tell you that you are cursing your children mm. so you will stop mm. there are people who are being unkind to their wives and everything mm. the word of god will tell you that your prayers will not be heard yeah. you will stop yeah. there are people who do not know that the enemy is after their children and the generations of their children so god will tell you to begin to discipline your your mm. children you know train them in the ways of the lord so that mm. when they are old they don't depart from it yeah. the wisdom of christ will mm. tell you how to run your business it will tell you how to run your ministry mm. isn't it and it will give you so much joy you will wonder what was i doing yeah. Isn't it? So that is really my prayer for us. Sometimes I like to pray with my eyes open That's right. and speak. Mm. That's why uh, we are called see as we the things we do. <laughs> so, but I like to pray. Yeah. That Father Lord in in you we live mm. and we have mm. our being. Yeah. Father I pray mm. that every person anywhere they are that the first thing that you will anchor in their spirit Lord is their need for you their life may look void darkness covering the face of the deep mm. but your spirit has not left them mm. your spirit is still after them so i speak light mm. into their lives yes lord the light of christ yes lord that will break every form of darkness mm. every form of bondage mm. the word says in isaiah 61 the spirit of the lord is upon me upon christ for he has anointed me mm. go through that list mm. are you broken hearted mm. are you in captivity mm. are you blind mm. christ has an answer for you do you feel like you're walking in the valley of the shadow of death mm. he says that he has come that you may have life and have it abundantly so i want to pray that the lord will save you that he will send many a way to speak to you that even as i speak now if you feel in your heart that the first solution is christ that's where we start So father we thank you mm. that you are saving people now mm. that your light is beginning to break habits to break yes, faithlessness to yes, break and believe and that people are coming to you and once in you then the work starts and it's an exciting work mm. so we thank you that the breaking of your word bring it forth light yes. may light illuminate in darkness places of our lives and that darkness will not comprehend it in Jesus name amen 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 thank you guys thank you for joining uh, please leave a comment tell us what you enjoyed about today's session tell us what struck you uh, tell us what you're going home with and the lord will bless you otherwise i wish you well the shalom of god be on you and your family in Jesus name amen amen thank you sir